Clark Apashian, chairman of the Utah Shooting Sports Council, attaches a little-known device called a bump stock to a semi-automatic rifle at the gun vault. Store and shooting range Wednesday, October 4, 2017, in South Jordan, Utah. Las Vegas shooter Stephen Paddock bought 33 guns within the last year. But that didn't raise any red flags. Neither did the mountains of ammunition he was stockpiling, or the bump stocks found in his hotel room that allow semi-automatic rifles to mimic fully. Automatic Weapons October 5, 2017 LAS Vegas and ATLANTAA's Andrew Mister. Wick Wickerham helps his customers at the Second Amendment gun shop in Las Vegas on Tuesday. He mentions how he's getting a little annoyed at this new buzzword circulating among gun owners. All of a sudden, we're getting all these calls about these bump fire stocks, says Mr. Wickerham, a combat veteran who served 10 years with the Marines. It's getting ridiculous these people never even knew what a bump fire stock was until they saw it. On the news, it's the new hype. All of a sudden, people are saying, I got to get one of these before they're not available anymore. Also called a slide fire stock, the add-on can make a legal semi-automatic assault-style rifle mimic a machine gun. Experts say, the weapon's natural recoil is harnessed to bump back and forth on a sliding stock attached to the gun's trigger, which allows it to fire as fast as an automatic weapon that would otherwise violate federal law. The current buzz surrounding these add-ons for assault-style rifles is following a now familiar pattern. Whenever the country experiences a mass shooting, sales of weapons often spike as many worry that lawmakers may tighten gun control laws when it comes to bump fire stocks. However, Wickerman and other gun experts are just not impressed. How much do you know about the Second Amendment? A quiz. Make no mistake, Wickerham is adamantly opposed to any further federal or state regulations. Also the owner of Three Degrees Tactical, which trains and certifies police officers armed security guards, and others on the use of firearms. He's one of Nevada's leading trainers in the use of deadly force. In the past, he's been a contractor for the U.S. State Department, he says, helping to train those on maritime missions to combat Somali piracy, among other U.S. government special operations. But I've always thought these bump stocks were just a novelty, he says they're not that good, and they're hard as hell to control. Paul Vallone, the president of Grassroots North Carolina, a nationally influential gun rights organization, agrees. Bump stocks, says Mr. Vallone, are an amusement, because they don't under normal circumstances turn an R-15 or another rifle into a killing machine. Because you can't hit anything with it. Only when you are presented 400 yards away with a field of uninterrupted humanity would something like that even be effective, which was the case, of course, when Stephen Paddock, authorities say, rapidly fired a hail of bullets onto a crowd of 22 concertgoers on Sunday, killing at least 59 and injuring more than 520 in one of the worst mass shootings in United States. History. Twelve of the 23 guns found in Paddock's hotel room were retrofitted with such bump stocks, said Jill Schneider, special agent in charge with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms at a press conference Tuesday. But if gun rights advocates such as Mr. Fallone, Wickerham and others remain enthusiastic about such add-on modifications, Sunday's deadly shooting had a profound effect on others. I've been a proponent of the Second Amendment my entire life, tweeted Caleb Keeter, lead guitarist of the Josh Abbott Band, which performed Sunday at the Route 91 Harvest Festival. Until the events of last night, I cannot express how wrong I was, he said, noting the band has members licensed to carry concealed weapons, and that there were firearms on the bus. They were useless. He continued in the widely quoted post.
We couldn't touch them for fear police might think we were a part of the massacre and shoot us. Enough is enough. We need gun control right now. Sen. Lindsey Graham. R. of South Carolina. 2. Said he was now open-minded to anything that would shed light on what happened and how to fix it. Without giving people false hope that were one law change from fixing things like this. I don't think it's the same old story some scholars see an opening in the long history of congressional inaction on the issue. It may be inaction at the federal level, but there's a lot of activity at the state levels, both making laws more permissive and restrictive, says Adam Wingler, author of Gunfight, the Battle Over the Right to Bear Arms in America. So I don't think it's the same old story. There is definitely going to be efforts to restrict access to these devices, if not at the federal level, at the state level. And the fact is, it may be easier to ban modifications that are not very popular among gun owners. Continues Drive